Hello there, and welcome to another Medicinal Monday. I'm Dr. Benjamin Alter. And I'm Dr. Susanna Alter, and we're both naturopathic doctors who support individuals in reversing disease and reclaiming optimal health through whole food plant-based nutrition and mind-body medicine. So we're excited to talk about protein and really once and for all, just get to the bottom of this whole protein conversation. Uh, but before we do, just a couple of quick announcements. First is that we just wrapped up a whole food plant-based challenge in the plant-based and stress-free group on Facebook. Um, actually, a lot of the challenge was happening on Zoom due to Facebook issues. But anyways, the Facebook group still exists for the time being. So if you're not in it, you can jump in and join these Medicinal Monday conversations live. And um, yeah, if you'd like to get on the list for the next Whole Food Plant-Based Challenge, it won't be happening until, what did we figure out, mid-June Mid or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a wait list for the next challenge on the Alter Health website, www.alter.health. And while you're there, you can also check out the Thrive on Plants program if you're looking for some more support, education, accountability, depth of understanding and peace with your whole food plant-based lifestyle journey. Yes, and I'd love to say a hello to those who are live with us right now. It's wonderful to see you all there. Yeah. And as a reminder, when you're live with us, this is an opportunity to have a conversation. So if questions are coming up mm -hmm. about protein, please comment them. And while you're at it, just say hello. Let us know where you're yeah. tuning in from. Good to see everyone there. <laughs> um, so yeah, protein. The, the conversation that I always love to start with protein, like the, the best place to start is really in the soil, um, underground, and really identifying where protein actually comes from. Because a lot of people are obviously led to believe that protein comes from our animals, um, our cows or our pigs or our fish or whoever are eating plants. Um, but really protein comes from underground and what I'm talking about is the nitrogen fixing bacteria that live in the soils and actually have a symbiotic relationship with root systems of plants. And I've been actually a, a garden intern, a garden apprentice throughout this spring so far. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning a lot in the garden about, you know, plants and cultivating things and stuff like that. And I didn't tell you, Dr. Susanna, mm -hmm. but just last week I was in the, in the garden with my mentor, my teacher, and um, we were digging up some clovers um, in the garden, like kind of weeding. And she was sharing with me how like these clover roots have these nodes and she cut into the node where you can see um, the, the nitrogenous, um, these nitrogen fixing bacteria and the relationship they have with the root systems. And I'm like, I know what those are. And she was teaching, you know, it was a teaching moment for her to me from like a b botanical, like botany side of things. And I was teaching her, I was like, oh, this is where protein comes from, mm -hmm. um, from a nutritional side of things. And that is where protein comes from. Proteins are obviously built from amino acids, which are nitrogen based molecules. And the way that the nitrogen gets into the plants is th once again, through this relationship that our bacteria has with the root systems of plants. And some plants are known to be more powerful in their nitrogen fixing properties, like clover, for example, in gardens, but also our legumes in the legume family. So these, for whatever reason, these plants have been kind of, um, you know, it's been suggested that they're the best source of protein or amino acids. But in reality, every single plant has these uh, relationship with the nitrogen fixing bacteria. Every single plant has amino acids abundant in the roots, in the leaves, in the stems, in the flowers, in the, you know, the seeds. And that's where protein fundamentally comes from. Well, I love that story and how timely that yeah. uh, you had that experience just a week before this lesson. But, you know, it's so important because, I mean, this question comes up for so many people. Um, you know, when they go plant-based, their friends say, oh, well, where do you get your protein? And it's so important to realize that any animal that we might have consumed to get protein in the past 
we need to factor in where they get their protein. Right. And they all get their protein from plants. So we can either, you know, use this middle man or this middle animal to get our protein, or we can just go to a more direct source, which is to eat the actual plants. Yeah. So the question is, and the question that we're going to address here is how much bro protein do you really need? And what does that look like practically? in your whole food plant-based diet. And do you need any protein powders? Do you need to focus on extra legumes or tofu or soy products or things like that to make sure you're getting enough protein? Um, spoiler alert, no, we don't need to worry about anything, um, but we're gonna share, do you think it's a good, good time to share this? Just jump right in. Sure. We're gonna share a little slide from actually the Thrive on Plants curriculum which we've talked about a little bit. I guess it fills up the whole screen. So we're in the background here, but <laughs> what you see here on the screen, if you're watching the video, how much protein do I need? And there's an equation. This is math. And um, the equation is your lean body mass, what, you know, really what your healthy weight is based on your height and BMI and, and that sort of thing, times 0 0.36 grams. That's the equation. And if you know we, we've got some math here on the screen you know if we generally recommend that people shoot for about 2,000 calories of course this depends on people's size and activity level and so many things but at least 2,000 calories it, it, we should say it's true you know most, <laughs> we, we talk about very often how most people are not eating enough when they're eating whole food plant-based so assuming that you are eating enough assuming that you are eating at least 2,000 calories per day and we also sometimes talk about the macronutrient ratio or proportion um, being that 10 to 15 percent of our our calories are coming from protein 10 to 15 percent of calories come from fat and then the rest of the calories the majority of the calories 70 to 80 percent come come from carbohydrates um, so if we're taking 10 percent of our 2000 calories per day um, that means that we're getting 200 calories from protein and once again, this is just science, just, this is just math. And biochemically, each gram of protein has four calories per gram. Um, so 200 calories divided by four calories per gram, that gives us 50 grams of protein from 10% of our 2000 calorie diet. Um, so 50 grams of protein. Is that enough for you? Is that enough for me? Well, based on the above equation, lean body mass times 0 0.3, so times 0 0.36, um, that is that 50 grams is sufficient for about 139 pounds of lean body mass, or an individual with about 139 pounds of lean body mass, which I would say is a, a fairly average size human being. You know, so obviously some men, some men have much more lean body mass than this. Um, I've got probably a little bit more lean body, um, maybe 150 pounds lean body mass, 155 or something like that. Um, but once again, depending on your height, depending on your lean body mass, and also depending on your goals, if you want to like really bulk up, um, actually protein in and of itself isn't needed, but caloric excess is needed and what that ends up looking like is more protein than we actually need um, and then on the right side of this uh, this slide here that we're showing with you showing for you is just kind of some standard some standard vegetables some standard plants and how much protein they contain broccoli is a high protein uh, uh, plant 17 percent spinach Popeye was Definitely onto something. 30% uh, protein in spinach. Then our, we got our black beans, 23% protein. And even things like a sweet potato or brown rice or banana, things we don't consider to be great sources of protein, it's built into everything. Once again, there is no plant that exists on planet Earth that doesn't have protein. And when we eat enough calories, when we eat enough food, uh, we are going to get enough protein because quite honestly, in the equation that we have on the left, when we're show showing 10% of our calories coming from protein, it's really hard to get that low of a protein diet. Generally, what we see when we do our nutritional analyses um, of people who are consuming whole food plant-based, 
what would you say, Dr. Susanna? Usually closer to 20, maybe like 15, 18%. Protein? Yeah. I'd say on average, honestly, it's, um, yeah, usually it's between 10 and 15, okay. I would say. Yeah. But yeah. certainly if people are, are putting in protein powders, um, it's going to shoot them way over, you know, way over 20%, probably. Definitely. And the, the ironic thing as we'll just kind of um, say goodbye for this for now. <laughs> the ironic thing about this whole protein conversation is actually that the science suggests that if we want to extend our lifespan and extend our health span and um, live longer, healthier lives, that we should actually be eating less protein. And the, the, the this comes down to the fact that most of the quote unquote essential amino acids that we need from our diet promote a process, um, called, you know, it, maybe some people are familiar with the mTOR pathway. Um, it's a biochemical process that promotes aging and promotes kind of oxidative stress and is associated with the progression of cancer and tumor formation and things like that. So this comes from excess amino acids, excess protein. So we should be eating enough protein, but hopefully uh, it's not anything that we need to th overthink or <laughs> over plan. And we just open up our mouth and chew the, the plants that we put in and know that whatever, you know, the composition of things that we choose, unless we're eating like, you know, just bananas, you know, and not enough of those bananas or just carrots or just celery sticks or something like that. Some sort of, you know, very restrictive thing, very low protein diet. We might over a period of weeks or months develop some amino acid deficiencies, but I've never seen or heard of anyone doing that. Yeah, really the only the only scenario where anyone would be protein deficient on a whole food plant-based diet is if they're not eating enough. They're simply undernourished in all categories of nutrition and not just protein. Um, so yeah, also just to bring up real quickly too, many times we might be faced with this uh, question of, well, how do you get a complete protein? How yeah. do you make your how do you make sure you're getting all the amino acids or essential amino acids that you need from your diet. And there used to be, you know, nutrition people talking about, oh, well, you got to make sure you pair your rice with your beans, or you got to pair your this with your that mm. in order to get a complete protein at each meal. Really what that term means, complete protein, is that you're getting all 20 amino acids in your meal. And um, the truth is that if we're simply just eating a varied whole food plant-based diet, meaning we're eating a little bit of this plant, a little bit of that plant, we're, we're switching it up, we're not eating the same plants over and over and over again, we're going to get all the different amino acids that we need. It doesn't need to all be at the same meal. Sorry, it, I'm, I'm kind of over here like a little bit rolling my eyes <laughs> because um, that's not it. Like the, the fact is that I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but the truth is that most plants have all of the essential amino acids. All the uh, most plants are complete proteins if we're eating enough of them. You know, they just have like trace amounts of this and that. Um, so I don't even like to entertain this outdated conversation <laughs> at all. I'm glad you did because it is something that some people hear. But the truth is that all plants have all amino acids and we just need to eat enough of them. Yeah. So, I mean, the main point we've made so far in this discussion is that the only thing you really need to think about in terms of getting enough protein is making sure you're eating enough food altogether. Yeah. Then the other really cool piece of the protein conversation has to do with what people talk about as being the package of the protein. Because let's face it, um, food is so much more than just the sum of its parts. Because if it weren't, then we could just kind of like scoop a little bit of this amino acid, a little bit of that amino acid, put some carbohydrates in there, put some essential fatty acids, put some vitamin this, vitamin that, iron and phosphorus and calcium, and just like swallow, <laughs> you know, just like inject ourselves with, with nutrition, which, you know, like there is the parenteral nutrition um, for people who are on feeding tubes and stuff. And it is kind of something like that, like synthetic food. Um, but 
when we're looking at natural food items, you know, and comparing animal based protein that has a different composition of amino acids compared with plant based protein, yes, the actual protein structures are different, and animal based proteins have more sulfur containing amino acids that when metabolized create sulfuric acid in the body which is a strong acid which raises the ph which draws on different biochemical processes to buffer that ph causing immune suppression and kidney stress and all sorts of other things within our system and maybe you've heard about you know ph balancing and that sort of thing and there is a lot of truth to that um, and the best way to eat a balanced ph diet or an alkaline diet is a whole food plant-based diet with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables so there's that piece comparing like the the plant protein with the animal protein but then there's the the protein package like i was saying and you know along with the the animal proteins we've got of course we talk a lot about the environmental toxins that make their way into those animal products the heavy metals, the pesticides and herbicides that make their way up the food chain. Then there's compounds like, um, you know, new 5GC, which is a, a carcinogenic compound, nitrosamines, and other sort of, um, you know, derivatives and TMAO or trimethylamine and oxide, another fancy molecule that's metabolized and um, drives uh, atherosclerosis and the formation of plaques and, and endothelial dysfunction. Um, so there's all these things that we get along with our animal protein, whereas all the, do you want to cover the plant protein Well, I just package? wanted to add two more things okay, to the cool. animal package. Exogenous hormones, mm -hmm. which which we don't need to be interfering with our own delicate balance of hormones, and also a high amount of saturated fat and cholesterol. Yeah. These are true. Yes. And then, and then the, the plant protein package, we've got fiber, we've got an abundance of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and uh, life and life. Water. And wa wa water. Hydration. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> um, so what else do we need to talk about protein? Is there still some confusion? Hopefully it's like clear as crystal. Yeah, well, you know, what's coming to mind for me is that honestly – I feel like I feel like a lot of people who are concerned about getting enough protein, getting enough protein, it tends to come from kind of like a diet culture where, you mm -hmm. know, once again, we've just been kind of brainwashed into thinking that the way to stay trim and lean is to eat a lot of protein and to limit carbohydrates. And, you know, we just finished our whole food plant-based challenge and actually this challenge was focused on weight optimization. We called it our eat more, weigh less challenge. And one of the biggest lessons that we kept harping on in that challenge is that really the way to optimize weight long term sustainably is actually to focus on the carbohydrate rich foods and to heal the metabolism on a cellular level and not to focus on these high protein foods, which also tend to be high fat. Um, it's it's hard to find foods that are purely high in protein. Well, Th protein powders. Those tend to be yeah. processed, like protein powders, exactly. And, and I'm glad that you're bringing this up. The other thing that's, that's so interesting about protein diet culture is that we're led to believe that like our protein snacks, high protein snacks and protein bars are somehow a source of energy for us. Yeah. And we kind of skipped over the biochemistry, the metabolism, so to speak, of protein. Um, which, yes, we, we eat protein, we break it down, we break down into the individual amino acids, then those individual amino acids are, are absorbed and make their way to the liver, which serves as this reservoir of amino acids or amino acid pool. And then these amino acids, um, a lot of people think that they somehow become energy sources and get burned as energy. And they don't. They don't ever Unless we are starving, there are biochemical processes in place to convert amino acids into sugars, which enter the metabolic um, systems and enzymatic pathways. 
Um, but proteins and amino acids serve as the structural components of our body, um, as well as, you know, uh, uh, antibodies, for example, in our immune system. Some hormones have kind of a protein backbone structure. And then, of course, kind of the, the like uh, transporters within our cells and enzymes that serve as the catalyst for different, um, you know, processes in our body. So mm -hmm. proteins are, are structural elements, not energy giving elements. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I'd kind of like to wrap up this conversation by talking about what does this look like practically yeah. uh, to get enough protein? Really, really, it looks like eating enough of a variety of different plants each day. We'll you don't, you don't even have to go out of your way to eat beans. You know, we hear people say, I just can't eat beans. And it's like, you don't need to eat beans. Beans have so many healing benefits. You should be eating beans. For the microbiome, for, for so much. But we don't eat them just for the protein. Um, so, yeah, there's so many different ways to get all the protein you need. You just need to make sure you're eating enough whole plants throughout the day. Yes, that is the moral of this story is honestly, um, we talk about macronutrients, we talk about carbohydrates and fats and protein just as like an educational opportunity. But practically speaking, we do not think for one second about protein, carbohydrates or fat. We just eat whole plant foods in their intact natural forms and all of those bits and pieces are serving our bodies and we don't have to micromanage our nutrition we just have to eat enough whole foods and that's really like the moral of the story in general in terms of everything that we need nutritionally yeah and actually just to put an example out there for you all to consider we also a few weeks ago we finished our alter health spring cleanse and on one of those days i got curious and i actually mm. tracked what my nutrition intake was for what we call phase three of the cleanse which is really just fruits and vegetables so you're not eating whole grains you're not eating legumes no potatoes even no potatoes and, even yeah. and because i ate enough that day i still ate over 2,000 calories I got over 50 grams of protein. Of course, because as you sa saw with the equation, it's kind of it's it's kind of impossible to mm -hmm. not get 10% protein. So once again, Susanna met the 2,000 calorie goal, which good job. Like honestly, on in the Alter Health Cleanse, like it it means like a lot of eating, a lot of chewing, a lot of digesting. <laughs> but that's the whole point to really flood the the body with nutrient dense foods. Yeah, so just fruits and veggies. You can you can get enough protein. Awesome. <laughs> uh well that's I I feel you know, I, I feel like we're at this point beating the the horse <laughs> or or whatever we're we're beaten. But hopefully it's clear as crystal that um, you don't need to worry for one more second about protein and obviously the the questions and the challenges and the conversations are going to come up like what about we, we hear it all the time still and i'm sure you do so hopefully you feel a little bit more equipped empowered um confident with what you're doing how you're doing it why you're doing it and you're able to defend yourself yeah. in this protein culture just ask your friends where do you where do you think the gorilla gets it from where do you think the cow gets it from where yeah. do you think the giraffe gets it from these are all herbivores they're right. just chewing on plants all day and they are big strong animals just like you and me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, oh, there's one question here. What about protein with kids, uh, toddlers? Would this be applied for them too? Yes. Yeah. We're all, they're humans too, as far as I know. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. they might not act like it. They might <laughs> act more like monkeys, but monkeys are similar to us. Um, so yeah, we all benefit from eating enough whole real food without micromanaging our protein intake. But I think the question comes from the fact that kids are growing. Mm -hmm. And when we're thinking about growing, we're thinking about, once again, meeting the needs nutritionally and, and not being deficient. Um, so yes, we, we want to make sure that we're eating enough. And um, we can do that by eating whole plant foods. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for the great um, questions that, that tend to come in in these Medicinal Mondays. And um, just a reminder, if you'd like to 
deepen your understanding of whole food plant-based nutrition with more support, accountability, community, all that kind of good stuff. You can check out the Thrive on Plants program, um, www.alter.health slash Thrive on Plants. And while you're over there, you can also get on the list for the next whole food plant-based challenge. Um, We haven't announce the official dates yet but it'll ha- be happening sometime in mid-june yeah. so until then great bye for now see you guys next time